What's up everybody? It's Gary McCready from HVAC Know It All. I've had a lot of questions on this vacuum setup. So I'm going to take you through it step by step in this video. This is the Yellow Jacket Super Evac Manifold, Vacuum Manifold. Now you notice it's set up directly on top of the pump on the 3 8 connection. The quarter inch connection here, if you read in the manual, it clearly states this connection is only meant for testing of a micron gauge. This is where you got to pull your vacuum from, folks. 3 8 connection. It's larger. You have more flow through there. So let's start at the system and work our way back. That's a quarter inch connection. And that's a vacuum rated vacuum hose. The 3 8 connection on the other end is for evac. Now normally what I like to do, what we all should do, is remove the Schrader with a Schrader core removal tool. But this Schrader is jammed up in there because somebody has mushroomed the fitting and I can't get my, my core tool in there to get the Schrader back up. Now we remove that Schrader to remove the restriction. When you remove the restriction, you have more flow. We have to live with it this time. But in the future, let's try to get the Schrader removed. Our next connection point is at the receiver outlet on the king valve. Now we don't have a Schrader there. That's fully open and we have a valve stem there. We crack that valve stem, we get it about halfway and we're going to open that up. We don't have a Schrader there so we're good there. We don't need a, a core removal tool. So now we come back to the Super Evac. Two connection points, three eighths connections. We have the gauge on top, that's the compound gauge. That's reading inches mercury. We have two isolation ball valves. Okay, and we have on the back a quarter inch fitting that I use to charge the system up. And I'll show you how that works after. So when you start your vacuum pump up, what you want to do is you want to crack the gas ballast. And the instructions state down to about 2,000 microns, I believe. So when you crack this gas ballast, you're basically bypassing the oil. Some of the air is bypassing the oil. Okay, and then that preserves your oil from getting contaminated. So when you hit about 2,000 microns, you close this up. Now you let that oil grab the contaminants and that will pull your vacuum down much faster. So we can check the status of our vacuum right now. We're at 1100 microns and we're, uh, we're steadily dropping. Something important to bring up here guys, did you notice the coupler I'm using? How it's on a 45? Well it keeps that micron gauge above the connection point. And the reason for that is because we don't want system oil getting into our micron gauge because that could cause problems with the gauge itself. So when it's upright like that, oil doesn't have a chance to flow upward towards the gauge. So that's a good way to protect your gauge. And the other thing, if you notice, my micron gauge is on the system. Luckily I had another port, service port, that I could put it onto the system from. You want your micron gauge on the system. You don't want it attached to your vacuum pump. Now if we had a valve here, your core removal tool, which is also a valve, that has a T on it and you can put your micron gauge on there as well. That way it's on the system side, not on the pump side. Very important guys. How do we go from vacuum hoses to charging hoses without getting air into the system? It's a great question. Do we have to take our hoses off? No we don't. One awesome feature of this manifold is the auxiliary port at the back. It's a quarter inch port and I'll show you what you do with that. We've got our tank cracked open. Okay. We got the gas flowing through the 557s. And we have this hose up to this point purged. So up to this ball valve we have refrigerant. 
from the ball valve on, we're in a vacuum because that port is connected to the vacuum manifold. So this whole section's in a vacuum, which means this section's in a vacuum. Now when you're ready to put your holding charge in, it's very simple. You isolate the vacuum, and now you're only open to the system. All right? Now because you're open to the system, you can go ahead and open this ball valve up, and your charge, your refrigerant, will flow through the vacuum manifold, through the hoses, and into the system. Now if you're lucky, and you weigh the charge in, you might get the whole charge in before you have to remove your hoses. If you don't, don't worry about it, because you've got a holding charge in there now. All you got to do is remove your, remove your hoses. If you have a core removal tool there, you put your core back in. And before you remove this hose on the king valve, you would have to close that valve off. Remove your hose, put your charging hose back on, and open it up again. So that's how you go about getting your holding charge in without taking your hoses off. A pretty cool setup. I like it. I've been using it for a while now, and I don't think I'll go back to anything else. You guys have an awesome day. Happy HVACing.